All right, guys, so this is your prep work. So you're gonna go ahead on and chop some garlic because you're gonna use it for a couple of things. You're gonna use it for your green beans. You're going to use it um, when you saute your chicken and you're also gonna put a little bit in your orzo. So um, just go ahead on and chop that and have that done so you don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, that's it. No particular rhyme or reason. I once you do that, and then you got, I got some sun-dried tomatoes here. So I'm going to slice those down as well, because again, you're gonna use these and the garlic for your orzo pasta. All right, now, if y'all hang around with me long enough, I will string bean you to death. I love green beans, um, always have. I mean, you really don't have to use green beans. You could do zucchini, um, I don't know, spinach, saute kale, whatever you like. But for this particular dish, these string beans were slamming. So this is what I'm using. I'm actually gonna saute them and finish them in the oven. And do you remember the garlic that we chopped? Yeah, we're gonna throw some of that in there. And also some red pepper flakes, just a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you guys something else. When I season my food, you will see that sometimes I will add a little brown sugar to stuff. And I am here to tell you that that is not to make it sweet. We're not trying to make it sweet. We're just balancing our flavors out. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna toss it in that. All right guys, I'm gonna honestly say that this seasoning right here gives this a lot of flavor. This is the Mrs. Dash tomato basil and garlic. So we are gonna put a generous amount on our chicken. Um, I really don't care what brand you use. Just make sure that it is an olive oil base as opposed to soybean oil. Uh, we're going to add some of that fresh garlic in there. We are going to add a few of those sun-dried tomatoes. Not many. Um, we are going to do some red pepper flakes. Um, one of my favorite ingredients for an Italian dish is fennel. So I got some ground fennel from the farmer's market that's going in there. And I promise y'all, this is not a lot. This is gonna taste so wonderful. Even though the Mrs. Dash has basil in it, I'm gonna add some more dry basil. I also want that taste of oregano. And so these seasonings in this package is uh, from the farmer's market. And again, I'm going to do a little bit of brown sugar so that we can take a little bit of that bite off. So it's just a little bit. And on the grand scheme of things, this, is, this brown sugar is probably only about 20 to 30 calories more. So we have black pepper. And so far, the seasonings that we have put on the chicken, um, we haven't used any salt because this Mrs. Dash, it doesn't have any salt. Uh, and this has a little salt in it, but we are gonna add some fresh sea salt. Just to give it a little bit more flavor, I'm gonna add my olive oil so we can coat it well. And we are going to coat our chicken. And this is how we want it to look. This is what gives the chicken that, I'm gonna call it a Tuscan look, where you can really see the herbs and the seasonings all on the chicken. So you see how everything is coated? This is how you want, this is the look that you want. Just like this. 
Can you see that? We have the pieces of garlic. My suggestion to you and what I like to do when I'm making this dish is to season it and let it sit for two to three hours or you can do this and let it sit um, overnight. The longer it sits, the better it tastes. Y'all with me? So now we're gonna get to putting all this stuff together. Look at that, you see how that chicken looks? It's well coated. You got all your seasonings there. This is so good, y'all. All right, so we need to put all this stuff together. All right, guys, so we seasoned our chicken. We seasoned our green beans, we chopped our garlic and our sun-dried tomatoes, so now we're gonna put everything together. The only thing I did that I did not do on camera was make the orzo pasta. So I made it as the box instructed and I went ahead on and drained it and it's sitting on the stove top. So please have that done by the time you're getting ready to cook the rest of your food, cool? All right, let's go. All right, guys, the first thing I've done, well, do you remember when we chopped the garlic and the sun-dried tomatoes earlier? Well, we are going to saute those first before we do anything else. And I'm gonna have some left over, but it's almost kind of seasoning the pan, putting some flavor in it. However, this batch of garlic and sun-dried tomatoes is actually gonna go in the orzo pasta, okay? So I'm just gonna toss this around just a little bit. I'm gonna cut that heat off. I'm going to go ahead on and get it on my little spatula here and it's going to go in there and wait for further instructions. It's going to give that pesto orzo a very nice flavor. All right, y'all with me? So we're back here. First thing we're going to do is get these string beans popping. Just like that. Pan is already hot. We are just sauteing. And because I want them to cook down just a little, I'm gonna put them on medium heat. And I am actually going to steam them just a little. So this is going on here, and we're gonna let this cook for just a few minutes. All right, so for me, these are good because I like my green beans with a little crunch. If you want to cook them longer, that is perfectly fine. There is one thing that I must stress. Before you start all of this, go ahead on and preheat your oven to 400 degrees because we're gonna start this on the stove and we're gonna finish it in the oven. So before you start everything, go ahead on and preheat your oven because these string beans are going back in this bowl. Just watch how I put it all together. The chicken from earlier, the chicken that we had all seasoned up. We are just gonna lay that into the same pan that we cooked everything else in, right? And we're gonna let that baby sizzle. This smells amazing. I mean, it really does. So go ahead on and let that sit in there. And we will come back when it's ready to flip. So it's gonna cook probably about two minutes on each side, if that long, if that, if All right, that guys, long. Um, pro tip, when you're dealing with chicken breasts, try to use tongs because you don't want to pierce it too much because it's gonna lose all of its juice and it's gonna dry out on you. All right, you see that color? That's the color I want because remember, we're gonna pop all of this into the oven so that it can finish cooking. All right, so we got that there. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that beautiful? So we're gonna let this cook about a minute and a half longer. Then we're gonna add our string beans back to the pan and then we're gonna work on our pesto. Our green beans that are pretty much all the way done. Well, we could use a few more minutes on them. We're gonna place these in the pan like so. Can we do that? Y'all okay with that? And go ahead on and kind of put it in between the 
chicken along the sides of the pan because we're getting ready to pop all of this right back into the oven at 400 degrees. Y'all with me? So far so good? I think we're cool. Alright, here we go. Right, so here's our pesto orzo. We are using the exact same seasonings that we used for the chicken. We're going to do the tomato basil mustache. We are going to do the same pesto sauce that we used on the chicken, olive oil base. I'm going to use the oregano, the red pepper flakes, the basil, and the fennel. All right, now watch me work. Everything's done. Here's our Tuscan chicken and green beans. I can't wait to taste this. And here's our pesto orzo. This is kind of my favorite thing. So it's not a wet mixture. It's a dry mixture and you just coat the orzo with all of the seasonings. Very, very delicious. Y'all ready to see what this looks like on a plate? Let's go. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you.